What's up gangsters? This is going to just be a quick 3D printing problem solving video. So let's get right into it. All right, so what I've got here is a whole collection of parts from uh, prints that I was doing last month. And these are all, uh, for the most part, these are just fit check prints for engineering work that I'm doing on kit design. So that was the main priority was to uh, you know see how my details were going to resolve uh, and how my accuracy was going to work out clearances between parts things like that um, and so all of these were printed at a 10 micron layer height that's just basically become my default because I want the best resolution, and I really don't care about time. Uh, I generally print at night, and uh, so I start the thing before I go to bed and hope for success when I wake up in the morning. Um, and so, you know, again, I just really don't care about time. Most of these builds uh, were between 8, all of these builds were between 8 and 12 hours long. And that's fine with me. Um, the other thing is um, it, that this is also uh, a lot about positioning parts and, and generating supports. Um, you know, you can see, like on this thing, all right, this is another one of those cases where it just, you know, there's just not going to be a, a perfect angle. And so you pick... You know, you pick one that works the best. I've tilted this part in two different directions so that I get the minimum cross-sectional area, which keeps the stiction force on the FEP at a minimum, hopefully, and that worked out fine. Uh, this part printed uh, almost 100% successfully uh, with just one shot. Something happened down inside there next to that square opening, I don't really know what, but it's not something I have to care about because even if these were finished parts for actual use, that's going to get covered up when the uh, ejector seat is installed. Now the ejector seat, I really should have angled it uh, in two different directions because I don't know if you'd be able to see it or not, but it's got pretty visible, pretty visible uh, layer lines on the uh, on the cushion and again I don't know I don't know if you'll be able to see that um, I just have not had time to spray some gray primer on all these and make those layer lines visible but nonetheless um, like I said it's just for fit check so I haven't um, I have not uh, you know cut any of these off of their supports or anything and actually tried to fit them together I'm gonna do that for the second part of this video but this is just a, a nice shot of the resolution um, there's a lot of little features there like those switch guards that are 0.1 millimeters thick and maybe uh, 0.3 millimeters tall but they kind of have geometry around them so they're not entirely self-supporting but they worked they worked pretty good uh, this joystick it's gonna be tough to see without any primer on it but lots of really pretty pretty small features I'm really happy with the way that came out and you can see didn't use any supports just printed it straight up and down um, you guys have seen this before this is just a newer version of this instrument panel and again a good shot of the resolution that I'm getting off of this EPAX X1 4K it's really doing good I feel like I finally got my settings dialed in for this Anycubic Craftsman at 10 microns I'm exposing it at uh, 2 seconds for regular layers and 40 seconds for burn layers and I'm using 10 burn layers all right, so this print, this was purely a test print. I think that one of the most educational things that you can do, especially if you're designing parts for, your, for yourself or for somebody else, um, is print somebody else's stuff occasionally. Because 
it'll give you, you know, you'll be able to see what other uh, designers are doing in terms of feature size and how they're, you know, creating details. And these parts, uh, these parts here, this seat and this console, these are all from Fanch of Fancharello modeling fame and he does great work and you can see kind of how his uh, feature resolution looks compared to mine. This is a 132nd scale console and you can see he's got all those holes in there preset so that he can use little resin switches from Tom Annie's of uh, Annie's uh, accessories fame who also is a really good designer and uh, so it's just a great way to avoid having to drill a bunch of holes later all right now uh, the seat is gorgeous and I sometimes give Fanch a hard time for doing details that don't matter but you know hey it's just one of those things if you love it you can't help yourself sometimes it's really easy to uh, get sucked down the rabbit hole when you're in CAD. But this is a nice comparison of my 132nd uh, P40 Warhawk seat. This one goes in an F7F Tiger Cat that Fanch is doing, and um, it printed beautifully. I think his wall thickness is the same as mine. Um, worked out really good. Now, the only thing that failed right here is this is supposed to be a joystick supposed to be a joystick sticking out of that little thing right there and there's not and uh, he and I did a little bit of investigating as to why that was and it turned out that he created all of the main geometry for the joystick using Fusion 360 but the cloth uh, canvas bellows that goes around the base of it he did in Blender and combined the two and I didn't notice until later, but Lychee did not like that part of the geometry, and there was just basically nothing there. Now, he went back and fixed it and sent out a new version of the file, and uh, I printed it again, but and I put some supports uh, on, the, uh, on the side of the stick there. Actually, this, this is the... I think this version is the one that still had the problem... Uh, with the with the bellows there, so that's why I, that's when I really knew that there was something going wrong with that geometry in particular. I didn't have a chance to print his corrected file, but I'm sure it's fine. It was just kind of a weird thing because Blender was not making that bellows a solid chunk of geometry. It was like a little uh, just a little hollow sack, which could be problematic because it's going to contain uncured resin, and that's never a good thing. But Fanch seemed to be getting it to print okay on his Photon. So, you know, whatever. Now, this piece right here, this is an F14 Tomcat wheel well that Tom Annies is designing as a replacement for the Tamiya parts. And he, again, has combined geometry. I think the, the, the basic structure here is Fusion 360. And then he's doing the all of these little cables and wires in something else, maybe uh, maybe ZBrush. And they're pretty skinny, and they did not all print successfully. And I just haven't had a chance to go back and, and print them again. But you can see, he's really pushing it. I think some of those are like, uh, like down to 0.1 millimeter diameter on some of those uh, cables. And I think, you know, at least without uh, doing some tweaking that it's just it's just too skinny um, but uh, I may try and, and print this again we'll see um, so that's that's all of that um, the point to that is you know sometimes if if things are not printing successfully you have to you know go back and, and look at the geometry um, look at your slicer especially if you've got stuff you know, where you're combining uh, geometry from multiple applications. All right, now this thing right here, uh, this this came out great uh, first time around. I've printed this before, so that was no surprise there. Um, and then I've got a couple of landing gear doors. And you can see how I'm supporting these things. I, I do not use auto supports. I am 
my, you know, I'm, I'm going through and doing it myself, which takes more time, but I get better, more consistent results. And if you could look at this from underneath, and, I, and I'll do a lychee supports episode at some point. Basically, I'm just trying to create a perimeter of supports all the way around the edge of the part and then fill in with a nice grid that gives it, you know, a pretty even level of support all the way across. So happy with the way that one came out. Now, this one, okay. This one was a, as you can see, a complete fail. Yep, totes fail in every way. And you can see it was just coming apart uh, pretty early on in, in the build. And here's what I believe happened with this one. You can see that um, I had uh, I had a, a pretty, uh, like the footprint for the supports, because I just put a shit ton of supports under there. This is what the part is supposed to look like. It's a shell, and I just put a shit ton of, of, of big supports underneath this whole shell. Again, using that sort of perimeter and grid strategy. But what it did is it created a footprint for the supports that basically covered that entire area. And it was too much. There was just too much stiction force. And so it was a case where having more supports was not necessarily the right idea because what I did to correct it was I went back and I used fewer big supports so that I'd have a smaller footprint on the build plate or, or, or on the really on the on the on the FEP because that's where it matters. You ideally you want the largest possible footprint on the build plate because that's what you want you know to get stuck during your burn-in layers but you want the smallest possible footprint on the FEP so you have to find a sort of a compromise in between those two things and that's what I did here is I used fewer large supports so the the, the feet were smaller and then I used mini supports to give me you know, more coverage on the bottom of that shell, and it worked great. That That is a 100% successful print as far as I can tell at this point. All right, now, next, prod, next print was uh, this thing here, and this was just... This was just a disaster in multiple for multiple reasons. Um, I mean, you can see it broke during the printing, but part of the problem was, and you can't really see it anymore, uh, I screwed up. This, this flappy thing here, <laughs> I was pretty sure that I had some debris in, the, uh, in my vat, and I wanted to run a clean cycle, so I ran my little you know, flat cleaning uh, print, uh, like right, like it was at night, it was right before I was going to go to bed, and then I got sidetracked and I forgot to go ahead and peel it out of the vat and came in the next day and immediately just ran this print. So I already had that uh, 10 layer thick sheet of uh, partially cured resin on the bottom of the FEP um, that I then tried to... Uh, print on, on basically on top of and it caused all kinds of havoc and this was a complete failure so that was just I thought completely user error but I repeated the print without the fe the, the cleaning uh, sheet in there and again you can see me spreading out the supports to get a you know less of a footprint and it still failed just completely broke apart during the during the print and you can you'll see you'll see here pretty quickly why that why that was because this is what it's supposed to look like this is the third attempt and this whole section out here was just too much of a cantilever too much leverage on it and i didn't have enough support footprint to keep it stuck and it and it just it just broke away cuz you can see it's pretty thin so I, as you can see i just resolved that by again Spreading out my uh, spreading out my supports using the mini supports underneath to make sure that the load was distributed across all of that as as much as possible, and my third time was a charm. Okay, since I was doing some fit checking and uh, 
wanted to put some primer on these. I thought I'd show them to you again in a condition that's a little easier to see how they how they look. Uh, so this is uh, this is the sub assembly of uh, all these parts um, and what you know they were ultimately how it's ultimately supposed to go together. Um, I'm pretty happy with this actually. The big pieces, yeah, not not so great. I mean, this is you know typical of what you might see in a resin kit um, or uh, yeah, really any 3D printed thing that's this large because it's just difficult to control the geometry in the print. And so what I did when I designed this is I very like on this insert here for this stabilizer. I very purposefully put the joint out here where it'd be easy to get to for the model maker to fill and sand that because that's going to be pretty much inevitable. And then the rest of the joints go pretty much along the lines of like where these uh, uh, flaps are. So not too bad there. Same thing on this one. This joint, no matter how bad it is, is relatively easy to deal with. And then on the bottom, I put all the supports on, on the bottom, which... You know, it's debatable about whether that was better than putting them on the inside. Um, but at least here, it's relatively easy to, to sand and finish that surface. Plus it's on the bottom, so it's not quite as critical. But at any rate, the real test was in how these landing gear parts all went together. And with my sort of standard now, like 0.2 millimeter total clearance, um, it, it, they, they all went together pretty good. I could probably justify going to 0.3 millimeter and make things even a little bit easier, uh, but yeah, it's not too bad. Pretty pleased especially with like how that actuator that's in there for the landing gear, you can maybe see it down there inside. Yeah, down inside there. That's some pretty precise fit and a really delicate little part, so I'm pretty happy with that. But you know, you can see, I mean, the surface finish on these is, is really not too bad. Um, on those parts, very little sanding. Now, this, is, this one's got some, got some pretty serious skin cancer going on right there um, on the inside of that stabilizer. And I don't know what caused that. That's one of those weird deals that doesn't follow any real pattern. It doesn't go with the orientation of the of the part um, doesn't go with build layer lines doesn't go with anything in the xy plane it's just one of those weird deals that just sometimes happens i i built this pretty much exactly the same as i did uh when i printed it last time and so you know who knows i mean this is why you know i say that 3d printing is one of those things that runs on the razor edge between magic and complete disaster. <laughs> a lot of times you just don't have much control over which side of that line you fall on. Uh, but you can see the other side of it, you know, not not too bad. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I wouldn't feel like I had to go reprint that that stuff. Um, that's, you know, that's that's just a lot. It's just elbow grease. Sandpaper, water, primer, just good old-fashioned bodywork. So, yeah, not too bad. Then there's this little thing. I'm really pretty happy with this. This is the engine pack for the uh, X24. Uh, it's the called the XL11R, I believe is correct. And this is one something that I kind of did where I put way more detail into it in CAD than I honestly probably needed to. But I was doing some learning and I wanted to also see how it would print. And um, I'm pretty happy. Like those hoses that come off of the back of those nozzles on the sides, those came out pretty good. There's some detail in there that I'm pretty happy with. And I think, uh, you know, it'll, it, it, with a, a coat of uh, metallic paint and a, and a, good wash on it that it would look you know like a pretty nicely detailed little part so happy with that then uh, um, I uh, decided to go ahead and blow some primer on these because again just so much easier to see and this will kind of give you a better idea of how those little bitty 
hoses and things uh, actually worked out. So not, you know, not too bad. There's a point though there where you can print smaller than you can really effectively paint. And uh, some of that is definitely getting into that territory. So I'm just not sure if I would have done them that small. But regardless, one of the best things you can ever do, I think I said this before, is to print other people's stuff. It'll really give you a lot of insight into what you can get away with and what you can, you know, what you can design. So that's good stuff. The seat looks really, really good. Really nice. Really, really nice. But, you know, you can see you got, got artifacts on that face. Again, some of it's just unavoidable. So you pick the face that you care the least about and let that one be the worst. That's just the basic, that's the only rule that really applies. Anyway, I think this is pretty good stuff. One thing that uh, somebody asked me about, uh, sent me a question on, on uh, the YouTube channel, is asking me what I think about magnetic build plates. So I thought I would just say that here real quick, that I am, I kind of lean towards not ever using them. Uh, I think, I feel like I see about as many people online saying they love them as, uh, as hate them. Um, and the reason that, that some people don't like them is because they have at least shown some tendency to shift around. I mean, with the magnetic build plate, you glue the magnet, magnetic base onto your aluminum build plate, and then your thin steel build plate that your parts actually are stuck to will just pop off of there because it's held on magnetically, and then you flex it, and that lets the parts pop off. So they definitely come off easier, but if there's any shifting at all, you know, it's going to show up in your parts. And with little bitty, you know, detail parts like this, it doesn't take much to screw them up. And I don't really have any problem getting parts off of my build plate. Um, I use this scalpel. Works great to just slice underneath the base, just, just like that. And they generally pop right off. So I'm just not compelled to get a magnetic build plate, especially if there are potential issues with them squirming around and causing causing uh, build errors. So there you go. If you didn't already know it, hopefully this will convince you that a lot of times success with 3D printing is just a matter of trial and error. And that honestly, things like figuring out how to do supports is really more of an art than a science. Regardless, I hope this helps you. If you are uh, either already in 3D printing for scale models or looking to get into it. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Much love.